Hello, this is Jennifer McGuire, and I'm glad you're here for another video. Today I'm playing with stencils. Nothing super fancy, we're just doing simple stenciling, but doing a few things that I think are a good reminder when you use a stencil. I'll share some tips, some ideas, and ways to stretch your supplies. I have four cards for you today. All are very different, and I'm hoping you'll be able to try them with some supplies you have on hand. Since I have a lot to share, let's go ahead and jump in. I'll start with this card where I show you how to combine an embossing folder with layering stencils. I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp Monstera Layering Stencil Set. Now this has four stencils in it. I only use three of them today, but it allows you to create a really large image very quickly. I'll also be using the Simon Says Stamp Star Lattice 3D Embossing Folder. Now these 3D embossing folders you can use with whatever die cut machine you have, but many people have asked me what sandwich I use for these very thick 3D embossing folders from Simon Says Stamp when using my Empress die cut machine. What I do is a clear cutting plate, the 3D embossing folder, and a metal shim, and I put that through and it gives me a great impression. But depending on what machine you have, the sandwich will change up, but you should be able to use this thick 3D embossing folder in whatever machine you have, and it gives amazing results. Now that I have done the embossing folder on a piece of white cardstock, I have my all to new 9x12 Ultra Sticky Mat that I'm placing my cardstock and my stencil on, and it'll hold it in place. I'm also using my Simon Says Stamp placement guides just to mask off the rest of the card. And I even put a stencil down here to mask the corner because I only want my ink going in the openings of the stencil, not past the edges. You could use scrap paper to mask that off also. Now over this, I'm using an Altenew large ink blending tool. I like these when covering large areas like this. And I'm using a fresh dye ink. You could use whatever inks you want I just was choosing the green color that I was going for here, but you could use any color you want. In fact, you could do like a little bit of pink in the center to give that kind of coleus look, but I went with all green today. And notice how you can see the embossing folder pattern even more when you add the ink on top. All right, let's move on to the next stencil. These are the easiest stencils to line up. You just follow the shape and they line up very easily. I'll place this one down and then I'll mask off the rest of the card front by using those placement guides and I'll apply a darker green ink. So stencils are really popular right now and I know a lot of you like me love doing stenciling because it's easy to do. If you do stenciling a lot, I encourage you to invest in some sort of grip or sticky mat like the one I'm using here. There are many different options available and I show a lot of different ones in my videos. But having something that will hold things in place really is a time saver and it really helps from making errors when you're inking. I encourage you just to watch different videos to see how different sticky or grip mats work and maybe choose one for you to try. All right, so I did a darker color over the third stencil and there you can see the fun blending we have. At this point, I decided that third color wasn't dark enough. I wanted a little more um, contrast with the other inking I've done, so I reached for a darker color of green. And by the way, all of these green inks were in different uh, green color families. One was a little more olive or moss colored and one was a little bit brighter. It's fun to mix them up when layering. It'll always look good. Now another tip if you do a lot of stenciling is to have a spray bottle with rubbing alcohol inside. I really like the Spellbinders Mighty Mister spray bottle. When you press the handle it does like a little bit longer extended spray. I do one pump of the bottle and that gives me enough rubbing alcohol to clean off my stencil very quickly. And by the way, I use the Simon Says Stamp Black Claws. I just bought a bunch more of these. I like the size, I like their black, and it makes it really easy to do cleanup. And here's a demo of the spray bottle. You just do one pump and it does like a little extended mist and it's perfect for stencil cleanup. Highly recommend it with rubbing alcohol inside. All right, so here is our background. You can see how you can uh, pick up that embossing folder pattern when you do the stenciling on top, but I want to make that pattern stand out even more. You could skip this step if you wanted to, but I'm taking Gina K White Pigment Ink and a Tim Holtz Brayer, and I'm lightly rubbing white ink over the areas where we did the green stenciling. 
This will put white ink just on the raised star pattern that the embossing folder created. Wanted this to be very subtle, so I'm just putting a light amount of ink down, and then I'm using my cloth to just pick up a little bit more of that wet ink, so only a bit of white is left on those raised areas. It makes the pattern stand out and just enhances that fun texture. By the way, I do think it's best to do the texture first with the embossing folder, then the stenciling, as opposed to the other way around. By the way, I get a lot of questions on how I clean my all to new sticky mat. Because it's made of the same material clear stamps are made of, I use my Hero Arts Ultra Clean Spray. I spray a couple sprays onto the mat, and then I use my Hero Arts Scrubber, which is super soft, but it scrubs off some of that extra ink. This is the same way I clean my clear stamps. I then take a white, wet cloth and just take off that extra cleaner, and we're good to go. The mat will by nature stain, but that's okay. It will still work just fine. I do not use rubbing alcohol on that sticky mat, but I do use rubbing alcohol when I clean my glass work surface, which you see me doing here. So I use rubbing alcohol and those black claws to clean my stencils and my glass work surface. But keep in mind, you can use old rags or old t-shirts to clean up your stencils also. All right, now there was one more thing I wanted to do to my background. I wanted this star pattern from the embossing folder to show up a little bit more on the white area too. So I have this super light green ink. It's very light, it's pistachio from Altenew. And I am braring that over the entire background. So the raised star pattern on the white will pick up that light green and it just makes it stand out a bit more. It's a very light color, so it's very subtle but it helps the pattern to stand out. I glued that panel onto the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. Now I'm adding a thank you sentiment called thank you breezy script from memory box. I cut the shadow from white and the word thank you from gold cardstock and I'm gluing that right on top of our leaf. I then am using the memory box exquisite butterfly die set. I like this die set because it has a few different size butterflies and even a side facing butterfly. I chose the three smallest, cut that from gold matte cardstock and added those scattered around our sentiment. So this card really did not take that long to do, but because we layered together a 3D embossing folder with stenciling, it really has a unique look to it. You could do this with any of your large stencils and any smaller pattern embossing folder. Those seem to work the best together. I really encourage you to use your different mediums together like this. Embossing folders and stencils make a great pair. All right, let's move on to my next example. And this one is a reminder to not just use ink over your stencils, but you can do much more. Now for this one, I'm using a new Larian stencil set that is fantastic. This is the sunflower pattern. There are five stencils, I believe, in the set, and they are super easy to line up. And you could do sun, traditional sunflowers like I'm doing today, or you could do these in any bright color of flowers that you want. Now I know most of the time when we do stenciling, we start with white cardstock but I wanted to remind you that you can start with a color cardstock. I've done many videos demonstrating this and I will link to one up here on the top right and in my description below. Today I'm starting with a light color of cardstock, but it's not white, this is buttercream. It's rainbow splash buttercream and it's nice soft like yellowy ivory color. It's beautiful and I use it quite often. It's a nice alternative to plain white. So I'll start by doing my inking on that buttercream cardstock. I'm taping my stencil down onto a bigger piece of cardstock than I need, but I wasn't really sure how I was going to trim the background down. Over the first stencil, I used Hero Arts Dandelion ink, and then I lined up the next stencil and added Butter Bar on top of that. As far as the ink line that I'm using today, I'm using a mix of different companies. I was really reaching for the colors that I wanted. That was the most important thing. There are many great dye ink lines out there from different companies, and I encourage you to reach for the colors you're most drawn to. One tip that I do recommend is to heat set your ink between your layers. The reason I do that is if you put wet ink on top of wet ink, a lot of wet ink on top of a lot of wet ink, sometimes it wants to bleed a little bit together. If you want to keep more crisp lines, it's best to heat set before you put another layer on top of it. 
So you'll see me once in a while here, stop and heat set. Sometimes I edit that out of videos, but it, I do find it gives better results, especially when you're putting a lot of ink down. All right, so I've done the first three stencils. It's time to come into the with the fourth one. Now with this one, we will get the leaves and the center of the flowers. I just used a light green and went kind of light over the entire stencil. Now I don't plan to keep the center of the flowers green, but I'll come back over that with a darker color in a moment. I did come with a darker green color and added a little bit of shading at the base of each of those stems just for a bit of added interest. All right, now I'm gonna heat set that again and I'm gonna put the same stencil back on. I did clean it, I'm putting it back on and then adding dark brown just to the center of the flowers. I did put green down first, but because I was putting brown on top of it, I didn't bother trying to stay out of those areas the first time around with the green ink. All right, so now I'm gonna heat set this really good because for the final stencil, the fifth stencil, I'm doing heat embossing instead of just plain inking. So I really want this to be heat set and dried. I want those inks to be very dry or I'll have a mess with my embossing powder. I also will generously use an anti-static powder tool just to make sure we have clean embossing. I'll line up the fifth and final stencil and tape it in place. And over this, I'll apply a clear embossing ink. I'm using Versamark ink. This is a clear sticky ink and I'm just pressing it into the openings. This just adds detail to the center of our flowers and a few more petals. I'm using a Tim Holtz ink blending tool to do this. I find that works best with sticky inks like this. And I'm dabbing it down and kind of pressing it in. I'm being pretty firm with this so that the ink gets in those tiny little holes that are details at the center of the flowers. Once I've done this over all of the openings, I will add Hero Arts Gold Glitter Embossing Powder. Now you could use any embossing powder you want here, but I thought the glitter in this would be a nice fun sparkle. So this is your reminder to do heat embossing over a stencil. All you need to do is apply a pigment ink or a clear sticky ink like Versamark ink over the stencil, remove the stencil and add your embossing powder. This is a great way to add a little more shine, a touch of texture, and it really steps up your stencils, especially when you're doing layering like this. Now it's time to create a sentiment to add in the center. I wanted the just a note to have the same gold shine as the details we added to our flowers. So I'm taking my Versamark ink pad and just pressing it directly onto a scrap of white cardstock. I will then add on top of that ink the same gold glitter embossing powder and I'll heat set it. So basically I'm creating my own specialty paper that I know will match the embossing on our background. This is an excellent way to make die cuts stand out even more. So after I heat set that, I cut just a note, which is from Simon Says Stamp and CZ Designs, from that gold glitter area. And now it will match our background. Now there is another way you could do this. Say I hadn't put the embossing powder on this yet, and it was just white die cuts. You can press your ink pad right onto the die cuts, then dip the die cuts into your embossing powder, and then heat set it. So you could do it either way. You could do the heat embossing before or after you die cut. Totally up to you. But in this case, I ended up doing two layers of the embossing, which gives like more dimension and a more rounded look to your die cut sentiment. And it makes it look more like an embellishment instead of a flat die cut. So now I have that dimension and that shine. Once I completed my sentiment, it's time to put everything together. I wanted to add my background onto the card, but have a little dimension behind it. Now, one of the things I like to use is scrap cardstock to do this kind of thing. But another thing I wanted to share that I don't share in videos often, but I do off screen a lot, is to cut up my packaging. I don't keep the backers that my stamps and dies come with because I put them in my own storage pockets. So instead of throwing those backings away or those backer sheets, I keep them and then cut them down to add dimension behind panels on my cards. So here you can see some Simon Says stamp packaging that I wasn't going to need anymore. I cut it down into a few pieces that are slightly smaller than my background and I'm building up a few layers. I actually have this area in my craft room where I keep all of that kind of packaging so that I can cut those pieces down as you see me doing here.
You can also die cut from these and that's a way to build up your die cut layers. Now, if you don't, if you end up keeping your products with the packaging and you don't want to use the pieces like I'm doing here, anytime you stamp something or stencil something and you mess it up, instead of throwing it away, keep that because you can use those pieces to build up layers also. All right, now that I have four layers on the back there, I'll put adhesive on it and then add this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. By the way, that sunflower piece, I trimmed to be about four by five and a quarter inches. I added the just a note there at the center using white for the shadow die cut. And then I also added some Pink Fresh Studio gold glitter gemstones so that it pulls out more of that gold glitter and it just fills in some of those spaces in the background. I love adding bling to any kind of stenciled pattern background. So this card is a reminder to try heat embossing over your stencils. I really wish you could see this one in real life. The colors and that metallic shine are so much fun. All right, on to my third example. I really love the look of this and I can't wait to make a bunch of these for teachers this year. This is the new Simon Says Stamp Just Right collection. You can buy these all together separately. There's this large six by eight stamp set with some great sentiments. Then there is a coordinating stencil to color in that large pencil. And there's a coordinating die set to cut out that large pencil and some of the sentiments that you see there on the bottom. Now I'm not using that part of the collection today. I am using a layering pencil set that is separate, a layering stencil pencil set. So I just wanted to show you that these all go together really nicely, but I am only using this layering stencil set. This is the Just Right Layered Pencils. There are several stencils in here that very easily line up to create a background of large pencils absolutely crazy about this because I was one of those kids who collected all the cool pencils so now I get to make my own cool pencils right by the way these stencils do have engraving on the bottom so you know how they line up this says layer one and it's for the top of the pencils so you knew, know which area lines up with which now I'm starting with actually stencil number two which does the center line of the pencils and I'm going to do a different color over each opening. This is why I encourage you to have small blending brushes. That allows you to do selective coloring. Instead of doing the same color over all the openings, which you could do if you wanted, you can use a smaller brush to get into the smaller areas with different colors and not have to worry about masking. For my pencils today, I wanted to do a rainbow of pencils, just the bright kind of primary colors. And I chose to start with medium colors from Gina K Designs. Her inks are great classics. I find you can get a really good basic yellow, basic green, and so on. And so I chose to start with those and do those over this first stencil. Now I'm moving on to the next one, and this colors the bottom of the stencil, so I'm gonna do this one in a darker shade of whatever I did right above it. So for this area here, I'm doing a darker green color than the green I used on the middle area. And therefore, I just looked through my inks to find a nice green that was slightly darker than what I did the first time, and that happened to be a Hero Arts ink. I know so many people feel like you have to stick with one line of inks, but you absolutely don't need to. To make the most of your inks, try mixing all the different brands together. By the way, in this case, that Altenew sticky mat that I'm working on is holding my cardstock in place and the bottom of the stencil, but I also put a piece of tape on the right-hand side so I can flip it up and look underneath it easily, but not have to reline it up each time. Now over this stencil, this third one that I have here, this creates the top of the pencils, which I'm going to do in the lightest color. So I just went through my stash. I happened to find a lot of Altenew inks that worked for this lighter color, and I will put those over the stencil. Another option would be to use one color of ink and do very light handed over this stencil, medium application over the first stencil we did, and a heavy application over the bottom of the pencils. So you can really stretch your inks by just changing up how much ink you put down each time, light, medium, or dark. But I had the different color inks, so I just put them to good use. Over this next stencil, I used a sand color ink to do the tips of the pencil, and then a cotton candy colored ink from Hero Arts to make the erasers a nice pink. 
The final stencil does the tips of the pencil, which I decided to do black, but you could do color if you wanted to. This stencil also does the silver wrap that goes around the top of the pencil, but I wanted to make that special. So I cleaned off that stencil and I'm putting a piece of scotch tape over the little pencil tip openings. I felt that was the easiest way to mask it off and it will easily come off. Now I'm lining that stencil back up and I am putting Simon Hurley Silver Lining Solar Paste over the openings. And these are those rectangles that kind of look like that metal part that wraps around the top of the pencil below the eraser. So my suggestion here is when you have layering stencils, make one of the layers be a specialty paste like the silver lining solar paste. It'll add some shine, it'll add some texture, and it really is a great way to step up your layering stencils. Now I set that aside and gave it some time to dry and I trimmed it down to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. For sentiment, I'm taking that just a note die cut, the same one that I used earlier, and I'm cutting the words apart. The die is meant to be with the words stacked, but I wanted them next to each other. So I cut the A away from note so that I could glue down just a note along that yellow pencil there. I cut these from black cardstock and I'm just gluing them down with a little bit of liquid adhesive. And I just like that I was able to change up that sentiment so that it's longer and fits on the pencil. You can see how the die is originally arranged up there at the top of the screen where you can see the Just a Note die. Next up, I used the older Simon Says Stamp Friend Greeting Stamp Set. Now, I just like that there were some simple, basic, small greetings there at the top center of the set, and I thought those would be nice to be stamped along the pencils. I don't know about you, but I loved whenever I got a pencil that had something engraved on the side of it, like your name. Well, here I'm basically engraving or stamping little sentiments along the pencils. And I thought that just really adds to the playfulness of the card and that just a note expression. So here is the completed card. I added it to a white note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. You can see that textured shine that we got by adding the solar paste over one of our layering stencils. And the rest of it is just plain inking. I also added that just a note and changed how it's arranged by doing a simple trick of cutting the words apart and then added the stamping to the pencils. This one would be fun to give to teachers, but you could send this to any friend that you wanted. This is your reminder to use up those pastes and gels that you're probably collecting when using layering stencils. All right, I have one more card for you. And on this one, not only do I do some stenciling, but I also have a fun shaped card that opens up in a fun way. I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Big Bat die set. I love this die set. I don't make many Halloween cards, but I love this and had to put it to good use. It has this half of a bat that is great to add to a card. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. You can add it to a card or you can use it to wrap around a card. In fact, I think it'd be fun to use two die cuts one wrapping around the left of the card and one wrapping around the right and it can open like this. Today I'm only doing one bat, but do know you could do the same technique on both sides so it wraps around the entire card. Now let's make our card base. I'm using a piece of navy cardstock that I cut with the Simon Says Stamp Pinpoint Circle die. This is a brand new one. It cuts a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel and it does all of that piercing. And it's really cool because it allows a little bit of color that would be behind it to show through. Love it. Now I'm trimming that down a little bit on each side. So overall, it's a little bit bigger than four by five and a quarter inches. I then will use some Altenew double-sided adhesive sheet to add this onto the front of a note card. The reason I'm using a double-sided adhesive sheet is it will really grab hold of the back of that pinpoint texture and hold it onto our note card. If I use liquid adhesive, some of that might come out the little holes on the front and I wanted to keep it nice and clean. Now to place this onto my note card straight, I like to use the corner of my scoreboard or a MISTI stamping tool. I put my note card into the corner, then place this into the corner and press it down, and that way I'm sure it's lined up. Now my note card was a little bit too big, so I'm going to trim off the excess. So we end up with a note card that's a little bit bigger than four by five and a quarter inches, and it's covered with that fun piercing detail. 
Now I need to create a hinge to add my bat wing to the card. I'm cutting a piece of cardstock to be three and a half inches by one inch. And I'll score this right down the center like a hot dog bun at a half inch. So that's just folded in half. Really doesn't matter what color this is, but I went with white so that it wouldn't be as obvious. I'm putting adhesive along one side of that flap and I'm lining it up along that straight edge of our bat. And I'm making it so the crease or the fold of that white piece just hangs out a little bit from the edge of that black bat. So you see I'm pressing that down on there and you can see a little bit of that white is hanging out the edge. Now I don't want the white flap to show on the other side of the bat. So I die cut another bat from black cardstock and I'll glue it onto the back side and that way it'll hide or sandwich between that white flap. By the way, I'm using Tim Holtz black heavy stock cardstock because it is the darkest black cardstock you can find and it has this velvety feel to it that is fantastic. All right, so now we have this half of a bat with a little white flap sticking out. Now at this point, I thought it would be fun if I added some stenciling to that bat, but I've already layered it up. So I die cut a third bat from black cardstock and I'm gonna do stenciling on this and then we'll glue it onto the other. I chose an older stencil from Simon's Stamp called Tiny Dots and I'm lining that up over our bat. Now over this, I wanted to use a metallic ink. So I chose to use the Lisa Horton Cloud 9 Charcoal Gold Interference Ink. This is really cool because it gives a beautiful gold shine that is outstanding. Now these inks are very unique. Uh, these interference inks, they look different on white cardstock and black cardstock. I did a video about them. I encourage you to watch that video because they are worth checking out. I do have another regular video coming out soon, but I chose to use this because it'll give a nice gold dot over this black. Now, I wasn't careful to do great inking over it. I did it heavier in some areas and lighter in others so that I kind of have like an irregular dot pattern and I love the final result of that ink on the black cardstock. So I'll put glue on top of our bat that has the flap hanging out and I'll put this stenciled one on top. So this is your reminder to use your specialty inks, especially your metallic ones, over your stencils. It's a great way to add interest to dark cardstocks especially. Now let's put this all together. To create this card, I'm turning this note card upside down so that the opening is on the left hand side. I'll put glue on the flap on the bat, so right there along that flap, and I'll tuck that onto the back of our note card. Remember this note card is upside down because I want the bat wing to open up to the left and then the card to open up to the right. And I'll press that down to make a good connection. Now I want something on the back of this to give it a nice finished look. So I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white panel. I'll put glue on the back of our note card and place it on the panel. And this will give us a nice white trim around the edge, which I think is a fun contrast to the dark navy and black we have so far. I also created the Hey Boo sentiment from the same big bat die set. I created the shadow from white and the letters Hey Boo from black and I'll glue that right onto my bat. The big bat die set also cuts two smaller bats, so I cut a few bats from black cardstock, and then I used my ink blending tool and that same interference gold ink to ink up these bats so they were entirely gold. Now I didn't put a really heavy layer on it, so it's kind of a muted gold, but you could go more intense if you wanted. And the nice thing is the ink that I used on these small bats matches the ink that I used on the dot stenciling. So it kind of pulls everything together. I wanted a sentiment on the navy panel on the inside of the card. So I used the new Simon Says Stamp Halloween Friends stamp set. Such a cute set. I just used the trick or treat up there on the top. And I stamped that with black ink on a white cardstock strip and glued it to the inside of the card. And I added a few more bats and some Trinity Stamps gold stars. Now this card stands nicely on display with that bat wing sticking out, and I think it's a fun alternative to a regular opening card, and it didn't take too much effort. Now if you don't have the bat die like this one, if you have like a large heart, you could create a flap with like a large heart or with a large circle or rainbow. Any large die would work for this kind of uh, wrap card design. 
So there you have some simple stencil tips and reminders and ideas. I just love that stencils can be used with so many other products in your craft room, allowing you to stretch your supplies and get more out of the products you invest in. If you are interested in anything I talked about, they're linked below in my YouTube description. I will link to a couple other related stenciling videos here at the end, including one that's about inking on dark color cardstocks. I thank you so much for spending this time with me and I'll see you soon with another video.